Hi everyone, I'm Mirabelle, a customer engineer at Google Cloud. Welcome back to the Google Cloud Technical Guides for Startups, where we are creating a series of videos for technical enablement to help startups to start, build, and grow their businesses successfully and sustainably on Google Cloud. In our previous video, we covered the Google for Startups Cloud program. Today, we will be moving on to our third topic on Firestore. We will be covering an overview of Google Cloud's databases portfolio, deep dive into Firestore, run through a demo, explore a sample architecture and a case study, and we will wrap up with some actions that you can take to learn more about Firestore. Let's get started with an overview of Google Cloud's managed database service offerings. There is a full suite of different database services available to meet your different needs, ranging from in-memory to non-relational and relational databases, as well as the data warehouse offering. Today, we will be focusing on Firestore, our scalable, serverless document store. When you create an application, there are many factors that go into its development. The complete ecosystem for application development could include the core UI frameworks and operating systems to build the application, in-app services from Firebase for features like authentication, and backend services from Google Cloud to manage aspects like analytics using BigQuery. Firestore brings together these different parts in an intelligent way by integrating with each of these portfolios. The mission of Firestore is to unlock application innovation with simplicity, speed, and confidence. Firestore's rich history started as a document database. After all, nearly every important application needs to store data. However, real-time storing and exchanging data between clients and servers have historically been complex. Even more challenging is caching data for applications on device to manage hiccups in terms of transient network connectivity. Firestore aims to address these concerns with a full backend as a service. So what are some benefits that Firestore provides? First, you can focus on your business value. Firestore provides a backend as a service for fast application development. There are features for real-time applications and offline mode, and you can run with confidence on serverless. The Firestore data model supports flexible, hierarchical data structures. Store your data in documents, which are organized into collections. Collections enable similar documents to be queried together. Subcollections are also supported, allowing a collection to be a child of a document so that related data can be stored together in hierarchies. This structure enables queries across all similarly named collections. Firestore has built-in live synchronization and offline mode. Real-time updates are possible because Firestore uses data synchronization to update data on any connected device. For offline support, Firestore catches data that your application is actively using so that the application can continue to read, write, listen to, or query the data even if the device is offline. When the device comes back online, Firestore synchronizes any local changes back to the database. These features make it easy to build multi-user collaborative applications for mobile, web, and IoT devices, including workloads like activity tracking, real-time analytics, social user profiles, and gaming leaderboards. In Firestore, we can use queries to retrieve documents. These queries can include multiple chain filters and combined filtering and sorting. Firestore indexes by default, and for most queries, the query performance is proportional to the size of the result set, not your data set. Furthermore, Firestore allows you to run sophisticated asset transactions against your document data, giving you the flexibility in the way that you structure your data. Firestore provides automatic multi-region data replication, strong consistency, atomic batch operations, and real transaction support. With automatic multi-region replication and strong consistency, your data is more secure and has a 99.999% availability guarantee. Firestore also scales up automatically with no downtime. This scaling mechanism lets Firestore to serve thousands of requests per second and millions of concurrent connections. You pay only for your actual usage based on the storage size and the number of operations. Firestore supports libraries for popular languages. Focus on your application development using Firestore client-side development libraries for web, iOS, Android, Flutter, C++, and Unity. Firestore also supports server-side development libraries using Node.js, Java, Go, Ruby, and PHP. 
Let's see how all that works in practice through a demo. Here, we are going to build a restaurant recommendation web application powered by Firestore. We will be using the web plant library in this demo. We will be going through how to set up a Firestore database, write data to the database, display data on the application, and also how to secure the data. Our restaurant recommendation application uses Firestore to save and receive restaurant information and ratings. To enable Firestore, we can go to the Firebase Console's build section, click Firestore database, and then click Create Database. Access to data in Firestore is controlled by security rules. We will talk more about this later, but for now, let's start in test mode, which leaves the data open by default for quick setup. Next, we select a location for our data. This location cannot be changed later on. Once we have selected a location, click Enable to provision the Firestore database. Now we have our database set up, but there is still no data, so our application is still empty. Let's write some data to Firestore so that we can populate the application's UI. This can be done manually by the Firebase console, for example, by clicking on Start Collection here. Another option to write data to Firestore is from the application itself, through basic Firestore write. So let's head over to our code. The main model object in our application is a restaurant. So let's write some code that adds a restaurant document to a restaurant's collection. This code adds a new document to the restaurant's collection by first getting a reference to the Firestore collection and then adding the data. Now let's test it out. By clicking on add mock data on the application, it will automatically generate a random set of restaurant objects and then it will call the add restaurant function that we have just written to add this data to Firestore. There is still no data in the app yet, but that is because we still need to implement retrieving the data, which is our next step. If we navigate to the Firestore tab in the Firebase console, we see that there are new documents in the restaurant's collection. The next step is to retrieve this data from Firestore and display it in our app, so let's head back to our code. The two key steps that we'll be doing here are to create the query and to add a snapshot listener. First, let's construct a query that will serve the default unfiltered list of restaurants. In this code, we are constructing a query that will retrieve up to 50 restaurants from the top level collection called restaurants. These restaurants are ordered by average rating. After declaring the query, it will be passed to the getDocumentsInQuery method, which is responsible for loading and rendering the data. That's the next code that we'll be writing, and this is where the snapshot listener comes in. In this code, query.onSnapshot will trigger its callback every time the result of the query changes. The first time, the callback is triggered with the entire result set of the query, meaning the whole restaurant's collection on Firestore. After that, when a document is deleted, that is, when change.type equals to removed, we call a function that removes the restaurant from the UI. As the list of restaurants changes, the listener will keep updating automatically and the changes show up on the site almost immediately. Now that we have implemented both changes, let's head back to the app and verify that the restaurants that we have just added are visible there. At the beginning of this demo, we set up our security rules to completely open the database to any reads or writes. In a real application, we would want to set more fine-grained rules to prevent undesirable data access or modification. This can be done under the Rules tab on the Firestore interface. Here, we can edit our security rules to restrict access to ensure that clients can only make safe changes. Our first rule will apply to the restaurant's collection. For example, an authenticated user can read, write, and update a restaurant document. However, updates to a restaurant document can only change its rating, and not the name or any other immutable data. In this case, deletes are not allowed which is the default setting. We can also apply rules for other collections, such as the ratings collection. Here, an authenticated user can read the ratings, but ratings can only be created if the user ID matches the signed-in user to prevent spoofing. Deletes and updates are not allowed. Let's publish the changes so that they take effect. And with that, we have learned how to set up a Firestore database, how to perform reads and writes, and how to secure data access using security rules. Now that we have an idea of how Firestore works, where would it fit in a wider architecture? Let's dig deeper into the use case for a retail platform providing recommendations to its users. This architecture diagram was created using our architecture diagramming tool.
If you're interested in making your own diagrams, check out the link in the description box below. Now back to the architecture itself. Here we have buyers through different mediums, both online and offline. A web application records live data points about online users, such as their geographic region and their device type, and then writes the collected data to Firestore. But we do not just stop there, we carry on to obtain insights from this data. Each new record creation in Firestore triggers a data pipeline in Cloud Functions that copies the data over to BigQuery. A recommendation engine implemented using Spark MLlib and deployed on Dataproc is then trained using this live user data in BigQuery and with product metadata stored in Cloud SQL. This recommendation engine then provides predictions for recommended products. Real-time predictions are written to Firestore and then automatically pushed to the online user devices. Batch predictions can be shared with offline users through an email service. And if you wanted to see a real-life example, here is a customer case study. PairPay is a fintech startup offering solutions for paying at the table, takeout order payment, viewing digital menus, creating orders, and card processing. PairPay uses Firebase's real-time client libraries and Firestore to allow guests sitting around a table to see each other selecting their menu items for payment and to settle up instantly. By also using Data Studio and BigQuery, PairPay enables restaurants to tap the vast amounts of data in Firestore in near real time to easily visualize results and to make adjustments to their operations on the fly. How has this helped? The real-time capabilities of Firebase and Firestore has sped up table turns by an average of 15 minutes, relieving stress for guests and a time sink for the restaurant. With that, we have come to the end of today's video. All in all, we have covered an overview of Google Cloud's database's portfolio, we dived into Firestore and saw a demo, sample architecture, as well as a case study. For those who are keen to learn more about Firestore, please refer to the links in the description box to get additional resources. In our next episode, you will be learning about BigQuery. You will get an overview of BigQuery, how to build ETL data pipelines, understand more about BigQuery pricing and optimization, data governance, and BigQuery ML. And that's a wrap. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to get notified each time a new video is posted. Thank you and stay tuned for our next video.